Let's talk crochet. Hey folks, it's Mary, aka Mercy Triumphs, and this is my channel, Slow Crochet. This is episode 056. Today is my first kind of podcast check-in in 2024, and I want to talk to you about the things that I've been crocheting over the holidays. I want to talk to you about any kind of acquisitions I've had, and I also want to talk to you about some works in progress that I have going on and just kind of do a new year check-in to see where we're at and see what we're going to be working on in the next little bit. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is any kind of Christmas acquisitions that I got over the holiday season. So we do celebrate Christmas in this house. I didn't ask for a lot of yarn, but I did acquire just a little bit, and so I'll show you what I got. First thing I got, I picked up at my favorite Yarny Thrift Store. I had a coupon there, and I ended up only spending a dollar for it, but this is Jojo Land Melody, and it is 100% super wash wool. It is 1.6 ounces, 50 grams, uh, 220 yards or 200 meters. So it's probably a sport weight yarn. This is the color MS11. So this is a yarn that I picked up and I just loved the colors. I'd gone over to the, the thrift store to see if I could find any hooks or anything marvelous. I was actually looking for a couple of extra balls or something I had on hand and I thought, oh, maybe they'll have it. Didn't find that, but I had a $5 off coupon. This was priced at $6 a ball. This is the only one they saw, but I thought the colors were just so lovely. It has that gentle kind of spring green and those kind of mauves and purples, lavenders in there. And I thought these are the colors that I actually want to bring more of into my life. And I thought even at kind of a sport weight, I'd be able to work with this with some other neutrals and make something wonderful with it here in the near future. So happy to have that addition. I did end up getting two balls of yarn from Hobby Lobby. These are Crafter Secret Cotton and the colorway is Haute Pink. And I thought they were just so fun. Again, it's those similar colors, that kind of pale green, that warm pink, um, and this one has like a blue mixed in with it and a little bit of yellow in there. It reminds me of those sunset -y colors. These are 100% cotton. They are 120 yards or 109 meters, and they are classified as a four weight yarn. If you've never worked with this before, it is not the softest yarn, but I thought it's such a fun color. I'm sure I will, number one, want to work with these colors this year, but I'll find something I can use these for, and they are just delightful to me. So two of those. The next thing I acquired was actually a surprise from my neighbor. She stopped by and brought some yarn that she wasn't really gonna be working with. A lot of that was scrap balls, but a couple of them were really beautiful, and so I wanted to show this one. This is Kaleidoscope 100% Wool, and this was color number 64, and it was by Elegant Yarns Incorporated. There's 100 grams or 174 yards on this, and it recommended a size US 6 or 4 millimeter um, knitting needle, and it is a hand wash lay flat to dry. What I love about this, and why I'm so thankful for my sweet neighbor, is it has that deep, deep navy. It has a dark forest green, kind of a lighter moss green, and a couple of different shades of warm brown. This is a roving style yarn, and I believe she said she was using it to make some scarves a while back, and she didn't need all of it. So I have here a couple hundred yards, and there's definitely some hats I wanna work on, and these will make wonderful hats in the future, I am sure. So for Christmas, I was also given a couple of crochet hooks, and these are prim hooks. I have never used prim before, and uh, to be honest, I do fill my own stocking. I love doing it, I don't mind it at all. I know some people want their husbands to fill their stockings. It's just something that brings me a lot of joy to do my own, I don't mind it at all. So when we did an Amazon order, I went ahead and added these two hooks into that order and they come almost like a toothbrush comes they pop out the bottom there and slip the hook out the largest size that they had was a size 5.0 millimeter hook and they also had a 4.5 which this is my first time owning a 4.5 millimeter hook it's called for a lot in amigurumi or different patterns but i didn't have one so now i do i've seen prim hooks with a grip to them 
Uh, but this was the only way I could find them just as straight aluminum and not a plastic head and not a, not a plastic grip. So I was really interested to look at these. A while ago when I was looking into the history of crochet hooks, I was looking at hero hooks and I was trying to trace what happened to these different companies and different brands. And I saw that there was a lot of crossover between American companies and German companies. And Hero was a, a company that was both produced in Germany and in the US. Well, Prim, um, somewhere around uh, along the way, Prim hooks kind of entered into the equation. I don't know that they necessarily bought Hero as a company, but they are a current company that is made in Germany. So this one was made in Malaysia. But the company Prim Consumer Europe from Stolberg, Germany. And uh, so there's all kinds of different languages printed on the back. So I've actually been working with the 5.0 millimeter hook and I do want to take a closer look at a dedicated video later in the future just because to me it's interesting to see how those slight nuanced differences in the shape of the hooks, the size of the hooks, the size of the grip can make a difference in how we work with a project. The last yarn adjacent acquisition from Christmas, the last gift, was a yarn ball winder. Um, this is the Knit Picks yarn ball winder. It was only about 20 bucks on Amazon and that's where it was purchased for me. It's pretty easy to assemble. I didn't get a Swift to go with it, but it has been really nice just to have. So on it right now is part of a skein of yarn and uh, it's a very simple setup. <laughs> you stick your, your yarn in there and you start hand cranking it. So in terms of tensioning it, what do I do if I don't have a yarn swift? Well, I feed it through by hand, or if I have a hank, I can actually pop it around a chair, like this squeaky chair I have I'm sitting on, or I could even pull my knees up and put it around my knees, and I can also use my hands then to feed it through. So definitely an improvement on just my winding balls by hand. Um, and I'm really glad to have it. It was really a sweet gift. I'd used this particular model before with a friend. I don't know if you're like me where you've kind of come to a point where there's nothing you really need. If there's something you want, you might get it throughout the year, but there's nothing you really need. So this was a gift that wasn't a huge investment. I didn't feel bad about that. Um, I didn't want to invest in a tool that would be really expensive and I wasn't going to get a lot of use out of because I know myself and it's not really practical for me to store a yarn ball winder and a Swift. I want something small and manageable that can just clip onto the side of my desk and it's there if I need it as a convenience factor. So that's why I went with the plastic one. Um, I requested the plastic one for Christmas so it wasn't a huge investment and I could enjoy it. And, and I have been so far. So that is it for my kind of Christmassy yarn haul-ish for now. <laughs> but what have I been working on? Well, let me go ahead and show you what I've been working on with my Prim 5.0 millimeter hook. And that is a new version of the Bush Tracker beanie. Now this beanie was originally created in knit form by Gary over at Urban Yarns, and he asked his friend Crystal over at Bag Day Crochet to create a crochet version of that knit beanie. I've made that one before, and over the Christmas holidays, it was so gratifying to me that I had a family member who saw the beanie I'd already made and wanted it for himself. So happily, that left my possession, and that meant that I could make a new one. So this is one that I've made using some Malabrigo Rios in those unnamed colors. And I did a couple of things differently this time. The main difference that I did was instead of using the double crochet herringbone, I used single crochet herringbone. And I did a row of single crochets as the pattern said, and then one, two, three, four, five rows of single crochet herringbone with single crochets in my, my bold color and then continued on. My hair is a little tall today, but I think it fits really nicely. I like how it turned out and I had a lot of fun making it. It was interesting not only to try out this new version of this pattern using a different uh, herringbone stitch than the pattern called for, but it was really interesting using this prim hook. I will say 
the prim hook has kind of a matte finish to it and it almost felt dry as I was using it. In fact, when I first started using it, I got my hands extra lotioned up and tried to rub some of that lotion into the hook to see if that would help it feel better. It might just be that the air is a little dry, my skin is a little dry in general, but I feel like once I was a little bit more lotioned up, it was easier to work with this hook. Yeah, I'm happy to have this hook. I'm glad that it could create such a beautiful hat. And uh, yeah, you'll be hearing more about this in the future. Funny story though, that is not the only bush tracker beanie that I attempted. I do have a second one that I was trying to make and I just realized I was not gonna have enough yarn for it. So I gave up <laughs> and I do need to wind this on my yarn ball winder. These are just some kind of scrap pieces that were I felt were so lovely, I wanted to work with them but it's very clear, it became very clear to me that I wasn't gonna be able to make the entire hat, so I will wind them up and repurpose them for something else in the future. Only two other completions. One of them is this very simple little scrap ear warmer. Um, and to make this, I don't remember, I think it was maybe 15 across. I chained maybe 15 and single crocheted, and then I did three uh, three rows back and forth of slip stitches in the back loops only to make a pretty stretchy little ear warmer. This one is actually quite versatile in my wardrobe uh, because it has the grays and the blues that I tend to go towards when I just need a neutral. And so that was a simple finish. It did take a little bit of extra time, but it was a great thing to work on just in those few little sweet moments I had in the midst of all of the exciting holiday things that we had going on. Um, this is a Noro yarn and it's a blend. I think it has some mohair in it, which is why it's kind of fuzzy and fluffy there, but glad to have it done and glad to get some use out of it already. The other thing that I finished is this pink shawl. Now this is a shawl that I was designing myself, kind of making it up as I went along. And to be honest, I wasn't sure that I would have enough yarn to finish it. For this one, I used a size 5.0 millimeter hook. I used my boy hook and I used a lot of double crochet herringbone stitches. So this is a shawl that I'm actually not sure I'm going to keep. And I'm not sure if that means I'm going to frog it and remake it, or if I'm gonna give it away. But I do feel like I accomplished what I wanted to in making the shawl. It's a pretty good size, it's pretty thick, and I like how the contrasting color starts sparsely and then it gets a little bit closer together and then here at the end it's a thicker band. So under what circumstances would I frog this? Well in some ways as much as it's kind of a nice drapey yarn I almost wish it was a little bit drapier. One of the things that I learned in making this was how tight those double crochet herring bones can be. I also got a better perspective on the moss stitch and how tight that can be. And when I say tight, it may just be that I am a tight crocheter. So for this yarn in particular, it is classified as a three weight yarn and it actually calls for a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. So I did go up a hook size from what it called for, but it just didn't drape quite the same as I hoped it would. It was a really great learning experience. It, it did take me quite a bit of time and I am glad to have it done. In fact, I think I finished it right before Christmas and was able to stitch in all my ends. And yeah, so we'll see. Tell me in the comments below, what do you think about this shawl? Do you think it's worth hanging on to and maybe frogging and remaking? Or do you think I should just go ahead and donate it as is? This is the problem, isn't it? I have yarn that I want to work with. I have projects that I want to do. So do I hang on to something just because I think I'll frog it and remake it? Or do I just let this one go out into the world and be enjoyed as it is by someone else? Let me know what you think I ought to do and I'm happy to hear what you think. And this is the thing too, I'm in this moment where I don't wanna keep something just because I made it or just because I enjoyed making it. I want the things that come out of my hands to either be used and enjoyed by me or someone else. I don't just wanna make things to store them anymore. I want things to be flowing out. I'm sure that you have a lot of interesting perspective and I can't wait to hear all about it. Currently, I only have three works in progress right now and I'm really happy about that because one of them is the big one. One of them is my blank slate blanket, which I can put a link in the description to this particular blanket that I'm working on. And you can see I did get a head start on this. 
I justified it by saying, hey, part of the blank slate concept is that you could finish a blanket that you'd already started. But truth be told, I started on it uh, right after Christmas. <laughs> and I was so nervous that I wasn't gonna get anywhere near finishing by the end of January that I wanted to get a head start there. The benefit of that is that I was able to see how far one skein of my blue yarn is going. So I might end up having to get more, but for now, that is an ongoing work in progress and I will update you on it in the middle of the month. Look for a video on January 15th. And in the meantime, check out any of the other YouTubers that are participating in doing a blank slate blanket as well. Two other things that I'm working on then. One of them I have featured in a different video. It is my seafarer's cap. And this one is coming along slowly. It is a lot of slip stitches, a lot of back loops only, and it is a lot of fun. <laughs> this is using Big Twist Value. I'm on my, my really my first full skein. I had a ball of it left, and you can see I need to weave in some ends there. But this is the color Rainbow Bright, and I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook, a size I hook. I'm using my Vintage Boy hook on this. And this is something that I can do just as I'm trying to wind down in the evening, but I have started to make sure I have stitch markers delineating my different sections. Because I did for a while, I was getting way off on my counts and my ribbing here at the end was starting to go in a, in a very sad looking diagonal. It's always sad to have to rip back, but a little bit of precaution can save a lot of headache in the future. So that's why we have these extra stitch markers there. But I don't think I'll finish this anytime soon, but it's a wonderful thing to have just going on in the background. And uh, I certainly enjoy playing with these colors. It's really fun seeing how it's all coming out. My last work in progress is one that I'm also using a size I hook with. This one I'm using my Hero hook for, a 5.5 millimeter hook. And I'm using the same yarn for this that I used for my pink shawl. And this one is Baby Bee Sweet Delight in the color Soft Licorice. Got three of these at that last Hobby Lobby clearance and I am making the Catalina Wrap. For this one, I'm actually using the stitch counter that I picked up kind of by accident at my favorite Yarny thrift store. And uh, it's really helpful for this design because for this design, I've made it, I think this is the fourth time I'm making it. Uh, it does call for you to go back and repeat different rows. So in the past, it's been a little bit laborious or cumbersome to make sure that my stitches are right and that I'm on the correct row, but this is making it a lot simpler. <laughs> so it's a black shawl. It's hard to see on camera. There are some bubble stitches. There are some mesh. There is some uh, post stitching in there for some ribbing. And I knew I was gonna love this shawl and I continue to love it as it's coming along. So no real time frame on this one either. It's one that I can do to kind of intersperse with the other projects that I'm working on. Yeah, I think having a black shawl is a great thing to have in your wardrobe because it's a great accent for when you need something a little bit classier, a little bit dressed up. And I think this is gonna be really beautiful. I know it will because I've done this pattern before but I'm excited to have it done and be able to wear it and enjoy it in the near future. So that is it for me. What have you been working on? Is there something yarny that you just recently acquired that's your favorite thing to work with? Have you ever used a yarn ball winder or is that something that you've been interested in? And also let me know about these prim hooks. Have you experienced them before? Have you experienced them in their plastic form with the the more ergonomic handle or have you used the aluminum ones? I'd be interested to find out. Thank you so much to all of my subscribers. I know there's some new ones of y'all that I've come along recently and I really do appreciate you. Thank you so much for everyone who has liked and shared and commented and subscribed. All of that kind of youtube -y stuff that just is super encouraging and i really do love the fact that i get to reach out to y'all and y'all get to reach back to me and we have this wonderful connection i hope that you're starting out your 2024 in a good sweet place having peace in your heart and know that you are important and you're seen i'm so thankful that you're part of my life and i really do appreciate that i get to be part of yours if I'm not your cup of tea, thank you so much for listening this long. I really do appreciate you, and I do hope I'll see you again soon. Bye.